Everyone, this three questions with Renee Nugent. There we go. Renee, the big Chiefs fan. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> hey, so I'm really excited to have Renee. I actually had an awesome time this summer. I was with Atchison Public Schools, where you are the superintendent, and I want to give them a little <laughs> shout out. So, <laughs> hi, everyone uh, in Atchison, if you're listening to this podcast. And uh, I got to know Renee a little bit and her team and absolutely wonderful. You're doing some really amazing things. So I'm really, thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And, and it, that we were talking like for about half an hour before we got on here, cause we're both diehard football fans, but you are like, I really like football. You love the chiefs, right? Like that's, I team. love the chiefs. I absolutely love the chiefs. Yes. Yeah, so in we're, fact, we're, if you just want to make this a podcast about the Chiefs, I'm all about it. Right. We'll be the new, <laughs> like the new, like Kelsey brother podcast, <laughs> right? Talking football and life and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So we won't, we won't, maybe if I just even bring up, uh, like I might, I should actually just bring up the Taylor Swift. Now that I said it, I can tag Taylor Swift in the podcast <laughs> and then my views will go up exponentially. Uh, I'm sure they would. Yeah. Kelsey stuff too, right? So, yeah. So we, Everyone who listens to this podcast know if I start talking sports, then I'm going to lose all control and I'll just keep doing that. So I'm going to get off that topic <laughs> right away. So Renee right. uh, has like a, a very um, many different jobs uh, in her career. She has been super into how long have you been uh, in Atchison? How long have you been there for? This is my fifth year here in Atchison. Fifth year as a mm -hmm. superintendent, which is like, you know, that's pretty high for a superintendent, right? It is. It is. <laughs> just right? stay in one place. It does. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. And a lot of superintendents, uh, like I'll be honest with you and I've connected many of them, uh, you know, went right up to 2020 and then they were like, well, that's enough. And then yes. a lot of them are new since 2020. Right. I don't, have you been yes. seeing that at all? Oh yeah. I think we had 35 new superintendents in our state this year, which is oh, wow. huge. Wow. Yeah. That Oh, that's yes. a lot, right? So yeah. And yes. yeah, actually, yeah, I, I've met a lot of people, um, you know, in, in, in the area for a long time. So, you know, with all your career, I know you have some really incredible teachers. I was so blessed to meet many of them that day and they were just so wonderfully kind to me. But when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, whether it was like someone you worked with, uh, someone who taught you, who's someone you think of and why? Yeah, I think of um, one of my high school teachers, her name was Mrs. Parrish. And she taught all of the English and journalism classes. And um, I, in elementary school, was on the struggle bus with academics and behavior and just kind of fit the mold of, of that naughty kid, believe it or not. And uh, when I, I got to high school, actually. I know, when I got to high school, she just started to recognize some of the things I did well versus focusing on some of the things I wasn't as good at. And that was my motivator. So I just continued to want to do well for her. And um, writing soon became a passion and ended up actually majoring in English. And I can take that all the way back to her influence on me. And that's a, that's interesting. And let's give Miss Parrish a little shout out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, that, you know, and I actually remember talking about that with your group that day that, um, you know, I was kind of the same way. Like there was classrooms where I really struggled and there's classrooms where I excelled. And I felt a lot of times the classrooms I excelled, they kind of knew who I was and they knew yeah. some of the things I did. And they often would see that as a strength, as opposed to something to be punished. And the classrooms where I struggle, I felt were often trying to make me into something I would never become. And so you kind of fight back on that. And, and I think there's that, there's that really, um, there's that fine balance in school is how do we actually tap into the strengths of the kids and expose them to things they might not know they're interested in, but I, and as opposed to, you know, doing both. Cause like I always talk about, cause I don't think it's an either or, right. And I think that's where we get in a lot right. of trouble in many facets of society is when we are staunch in one position. I, my argument has always been, it's not about only focusing on strengths. It's just about starting there. And right. I, I, I think part of the reason I say like, we've got to expose kids to things they might not know they're interested in and maybe push them in some of those areas too. Uh, my two biggest regrets are it, like, as a learner is quitting piano and not being able to speak Greek. And we are the only Greek family in our community. And my mom would speak Greek to us. I'm like, don't, you're embarrassing us. Right? Like I remember saying that. Mm -hmm. And I, there's some part of me that just wishes she say, shut up, you're learning Greek. Right. And like, where she would have just <laughs> taken that away from me, you know, like taking yeah. the choice away. 
So I always, you know, I think it's really important to kind of find that balance because, you know, there's a lot of things I do today that I, you had to force me to do when I was in school and I'm glad they did. So I, I appreciate that conversation. All right. So yeah. I've met many of your um, leadership team. It was nice because we actually had a, a really great conversation um, after I, you know, presented to your entire staff. And that was like a really fascinating because it was really informal um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really great conversation. So I know you already work with great administrators, but when you think of a great administrator, and I'm sure you could name probably go all day, just even in your own school community, oh, yeah. who's someone you think of and why? Yeah, I have, I have been so blessed with good administrators. And I think that makes a world of difference as you're trying to grow yourself as a leader. I mean, you really look up to those who make a difference. I've never had a dud uh, leader of me. And I think that's awesome. Right. Um, but my, my most, the, the superintendent that I worked under previously, Dr. Steve Carlin, um, he was a master at staying calm and staying cool and never, I would never see him get unraveled. Um, no matter what kind of emotions people were throwing at him. And that has just stuck with me, um, in just being able to stay focused and, and not have to get, um, you know, if, if someone says or does something that, that would normally maybe 10 years ago, sent me over the edge, it doesn't anymore. And I attribute, I attribute that directly to him because he just handled everyone, every human being with grace. And, um, and he had high expectations for us as a leader and we worked our tails off. Um, but he was always very appreciative and thank you and recognized us for our work as well. So. Good Dr. Crow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's a chief's like a uh, song or something I should do, but yeah. <laughs> Um, there, so when you, when you said that, and they were talking about him, there's a book I read and I really enjoyed it and it really kind of influenced my thinking. It's, uh, it's, it's called getting to neutral, uh, by Trevor Moad. Now, Trevor Moad actually passed away, um, right after, um, he, he wrote it and he passed away. Uh, he had cancer and he, he, I, I'm sure you'll know he, he was like basically one of Russell Wilson's biggest influences. Uh, and you know, Russell Wilson hasn't been doing great like the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how much of that connection, I don't know because of how much he influ and his whole notion is getting to neutral and the, the idea of getting to neutral, it, it, it pushed my thinking because I was, you know, I'm, I consider myself a pretty positive person in the sense that I'm always trying to figure out a way forward. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of times positivity is like, I'm just kind of overly blindly optimistic and I don't kind of believe that, but his, his focus is saying like, it's not about being negative or being positive. It's just basically looking at a situation and figuring out like, what's, what's the next best thing I can do to do that. So yeah. when you, when you, when you said that about how there'd be some situations, and how Dr. Carlin dealt with it. This it's one of the things that I thought about right away. Cause that was like, I, I, I've tried, and there's some things that I've dealt with, um, in the last, you know, few months that I feel that that mentality has really helped me just saying, okay, this sucks. All right. Okay. It sucks, but I still got to figure out and don't get upset about George, it. Don't get excited do, about do it. You, but, do you yeah. remember, do you remember George at, at your, um, uh, convocation with our group, you shared about, there's really no such thing as toxic positivity. Um, I mean, right. there is, but, right. and I, I think that's kind of that lens that I look through when a situation is thrown at me, that's really bad. I really try to think of, okay, but what good can I get out of this and right. use? What can I learn from it? And, and I think that was a shoot off of what, of what Dr. Carlin did that remaining neutral, but we aren't immediately going to jump to what's bad about a situation. We're going to look for what's good in it. Yeah. And, and, and I, you and I talked to, I remember like you and I talked about this after the fact. And so like there, it, I, and there is such thing as toxic positivity, right? And right. I, the example I give, and I actually remember giving to your staff, if my house is burning down and I'm like, oh, it's nice and warm in here. That's, <laughs> that's toxic positivity. I get that, right? But I think sometimes when people are attacking you for trying to wait for it by shaming you with the term toxic positivity, it's sometimes because they want to kind of stay in the same place. And mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I can't remember the exact phrase, 
but someone said when you complain about a situation when you're like complain about a problem when you're done complaining it's still a problem right like, it doesn't actually change you have to do something you can't complain Correct. about it doesn't fix the problem right so right. That, that was a really powerful statement all right so last question um, and I know you've, you know, you've, you've dealt with a lot of different things in your career, personally, professionally. Uh, I know, um, one of the things that I connected with you right away, uh, is we're both, well, not only we're both like, we're kind of like besties all of a sudden, right? We're both, <laughs> we are. We're both runners. Uh, yeah. and so I know, um, we have a lot of things in common. And so running, running teaches you a lot, whether you want to or not kind of you know, teaches yes. really, and it's a really great way to look internally. So. I know you've had a really great career um, and, you know, superintendent, but if you can go back to your very first year of teaching, what is some advice that you'd give to yourself and why? Um, I would definitely say that, that the advice I would give to myself is have fun. Don't sweat the small stuff. Um, you know, there's so much being thrown at you at one time when you're new mm -hmm. that you just have to block out some of that noise and just go with it. Get to know the kids, get to know the babies, um, get to know the families and just, just give it your all a hundred percent all the time, but then laugh and have fun. I don't think I did enough of that my first year. And so the older I get, the more I have fun and the, and the better work I do a hundred percent, the better work I do, um, going to chiefs games, going for runs <laughs> Absolutely. that, that, that sets me, you know, that gets me focused on, I do have a life outside of work and that's okay to have a life outside of work. But then when I'm at work, I'm all in hundred percent, but I'm not going to be drowning in my work. Everything I do, I'm going to have fun doing it. Um, I, I shared with you earlier, I love my job. I love coming to work every day. And people are like, you can't be like that a hundred percent of the time. Well, I am. And, and when I get to the point that I don't love it, I'm going to have to find something else and I'll be, and I'll be okay with that. Well, you know, so like, so I'm looking at your, um, Twitter profile and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming, um, that that's your husband at the chiefs game you're with. Yep. Yes. Right. So I love, you know, I love that you show that side because it's like, I'm an angry parent. I'm going to get Renee and then like, Oh, but she's <laughs> a chiefs fan. How could like, you know? <laughs> So, you know, yeah. like 95% of your parents are probably Chiefs fans and, you know, in your community. So right. they really be yeah. mad, you know, so I think, <laughs> I think part of that, I think sometimes when we immerse ourselves in our person, like in our work as our, our work is our personality and who we are, then yeah. sometimes people actually don't see you as a human being. They just see you as right. this worker, right. That can yeah. attack. But when they start seeing like little elements of like you and your husband at a chief's game, right. that's something, I, I think that's something that's really important to me. Yeah. And if you don't actually, we, we talk about kids, you know, focusing on the whole child, but then we're like a one dimensional person yes. in education sometimes. So I, I, I love that. So yeah. Renee, I love talking to you. Um, and it was really thank great you. to work with your um, staff, your community. Uh, so thank you for being on the podcast and uh, go chiefs and hopefully go chiefs. You don't get jinxed by any, you know, bad luck. <laughs> but, all right. Thanks for joining and have a wonderful day.